Ah, the theater. Home of many an artist. From the carpenter and scenic designer, often shrouded in sawdust, the draper and costume designer, praying to their pagan gods to help them dress the masses, the technical director and his assistant, keeping order in the tribe, to the electrician and lighting designer, spending so many late hours in the theater with nobody for company aside from the stray ghost. Today we follow this elusive technician to understand the core of the lighting designer. We must be careful not to spook them. The black garbed lighting technician, Lumus Technicus, is an elusive creature. It prefers to nest in a high, isolated location with a good view of its territory. The most reliable way to make a sighting is to offer food, being sure to announce audibly that the food is indeed intended for the technician. But this food need not be in the open, for the technician will find it. In fact, a secluded location might be conducive to a longer sighting. Once the technician has alerted to the presence of food, it will promptly emerge. Ensure you are not in its path and do not interact with it, and you can observe as it silently fills its mouth, its plate, and its pocket with a variety of foodstuffs. Though technicians are omnivores, many prefer a diet rich in meat. Under sated, the technician will retreat to its den. However, if you leave food in place for several hours, you can often sight it returning to the source of its previous windfall after competing species have left the area for the night. Now that we have begun a trade with the technician, let us see what wisdom he offers us in recompense for our snacks. Oh man. Thanks for the intro and the food, Sir David Attenborough. This will keep you going for this video at least. All right, y'all, let's get this right on the show. The basics of lighting. All thanks to the Solid Foundation, so that's what we're gonna go over today. We're gonna go over where we hang lights, why we hang them there, the general types of lights we use here, how they work, some electrical safety, how we hang and strike a light, and the basics of our light work. Let's start off by checking out what I've been working on and see what Mr. Holly thinks of it. Yo, Mr. Holly, can you check this out for a second? Let me know what you think. Uh, send it. Petros, you, you gotta give me something better than that. Uh, hey, you know what? Go big or go home, man. Uh, okay, um, how about something like this? Whoa! Hey, Petros, maybe something in between? Mr. Holly, you're really asking a lot of me here. Um, how about something like this? Oh, ah, ah, ah. Ooh, I like that. Wah! To get dope concert lighting, beautifully lit dance pieces, or dramatic moments in a play, you must first learn the basics of lighting. So first let's look at where we hang lights and why they go there. Here at the Met, we have three main areas where we hang our lights. The APs, the box booms, and the electrics. Most proscenium style theaters have some setup similar to this. Black box theaters have the same concepts of lighting positions and functions, but it's much more mutable than a proscenium theater to meet the variable staging that often happens in black boxes. The APs are typically used for hanging lights for front light. Front light is light that shines onto the actor's face from the audience's perspective so that we can see their face. The electrics are ideal for top lighting. As the name suggests, 
Top hat is light that's directly above the actors. Top hat is where a lot of the color in a scene comes from, helping to create mood, reinforce theme, time of day, location, and many more functions. It's also good for removing unsightly shadows from the floor. Top light puts a highlight on the tops of the heads of the actors, as well as their shoulders. Top lights are typically a wash fixture, most often a Fresnel, though I have used our standard Source 4s as top lights in the past. The box booms and the ends of our electrics are ideal positions for side lighting. As the name implies, side light is light that it lights the actor's sides from the audience's perspective, and apparently theatrical naming conventions aren't that creative. Side light is utilized much more heavily in dance and musical lighting when compared to non-musical lighting. Side light is used to accentuate the shapes of the performer's body by creating a highlight that goes along their sides from toe to head. Side light is a catch-all term for a multitude of angles of side light including shin busters, or lights that sit at shin level that dancers are notorious for hitting their shins on, to high sides, or side light that is usually up on an electric. Side light is also usually an ellipsoidal fixture, but I have used wash fixtures as side lighting in the past. Going back to the electrics, we will find an ideal place for backlighting, which to once again go along with our naming conventions that lack creativity, is light that shines on the performer's backs from the audience's perspective. Backlight is incredibly handy for separating visually the performers from the scenery and also placing a strong highlight on their shoulders and the tops of their heads. It's also very good for creating silhouettes. Backlighting, like top lighting, is usually from a wash fixture, but it could be from an ellipsoidal fixture for extra punch. And now, a bonus lighting position, the ground. Footlights were some of the first controllable sources of lights used in theater, and as the name once again implies, they sit at the performer's feet at the edge of the stage. Footlights are good for removing shadows caused by eyebrows and hats, but it's an unnatural light source in daily life, so performers tend to look strange if the angle is too steep pointing up at their faces. Footlights tend to be a special type of fixture that we call inkies or birdies, depending on the size, but they're just small fresnels. Now with the basics of lighting positions out of the way, let's talk about the types of lights we use here at the Met and their parts. There are many specific types of lights, but they all fall into a few general categories. The Source 4 is the workhorse of theater, and it belongs to a family called ellipsoidals, due to its ellipsoidal shaped reflector in the back of the light. Ellipsoidals, in general, have a shape similar to this. They all hang from a C-clamp, which holds the yoke, that the body of the light is attached to. On the side of the yoke is a knob that, while loosened, will allow you to control the tilt of the light. Up at the top, there's a small set screw that you can loosen to adjust the pan or left and right angle of the light. After using these, it's very important to retighten them so they don't lose their focus. At the back is the lamp housing, which has the plug attached to it. The lamp from there points into the body of the light through the reflector, which reflects all the light that isn't already headed that way down toward the lens. Before the lens are the shutters. The shutters allow us to change the circular pool of light to a variety of other shapes. Near the shutters is a slot for gobos, or stencils for light. An important note about both shutters and gobos is that they operate upside down and backwards from what you expect because of the ellipsoidal shaped reflector. The ellipsoidal reflector shape makes the light invert on all axes. Next is the lens tube, also called a barrel, that holds the lens or lenses. By moving the lens tube forward or backward in relation to the lamp, you can adjust the focus of the light from a soft, diffuse edge to a sharp, well-defined edge. At the front of the light is a slot for holding a gel frame so we can change the color of the light. Our LED source force operate in much the same manner. They just have LEDs creating the light rather than an incandescent source. Since ellipsoidals have shutters and an adjustable lens tube, they make for an ideal front light. We're able to shut our light off of what we don't want it to shine on and control just how soft the edge of the light is. Lastly, the most important part of the light is the safety chain, which will keep our actors safe in the event of this light falling. Next is the Fresnel light. Fresnels are one type of wash fixture, and wash fixtures are fixtures that have a soft, diffuse pool of light. Fresnels are named for their lens, which was created by a French physicist in 1823 for lighthouses. Fresnel lenses are good for us as their dappled texture creates a soft, even pool of light. And though their sharpness isn't adjustable, the size of their pool of light is. Much of how we work with Fresnels is the same as an ellipsoidal. They have the same C-clamp, the same yoke, the same focus knob, and the same set screw that controls pan and tilt. The same gel frame slot, just bigger. Fresnels do not have a shutter assembly though, so if we wanted to keep its light from spilling on something we have to use what's called a barn door. 
Here at the Met, we mostly use LED wash fixtures, but like the Source 4s, they function physically much like their incandescent counterparts. And again, the safety chain here is the most important part. The last type of fixture I'll go over here is the moving light, but only briefly as many companies make them and there are hundreds of variations on them. Moving lights are lights that can have their pan, tilt, color, intensity, gobos, focus sharpness, and many other features controlled remotely from the light board. Moving lights come in three general styles, profile, wash, and hybrid. And that just means that they may or may not have their sharpness adjustment, a gobo, a large pool of light, a soft pool of light, or there's something in between. Now our light board controls our dimmer rack, which lets a variable amount of electricity through to the lights to turn them on and off at different rates or degrees. At all of our lighting positions, there are evenly spaced circuits that correspond to one of the dimmers on the rack. Once we hang a light, we need to plug it into one of these circuits so it's controllable. The plug style here we use is called a stage pin. Inside is three pins, one for hot, one for the neutral, and one for the ground. The ground is the most important and is clearly labeled on all plugs and wires. The ground is going to be the longest prong on all the plugs so that it makes contact first. The ground wire is always the green one, and very often the screw that holds the ground wire to the ground terminal is a different shape, usually a hexagon. All things should be properly grounded so that, in the case of a short circuit, the electricity has a safe path out of the building and into the ground outside, rather than shocking someone, causing a fire, or damaging equipment. While plugging in a light, you should keep your fingers and hands away from the contacts just in case the circuit is still on. Additionally, we want to tie our cables to our battens so that there's no tension on the connector. Otherwise, the wires could be pulled loose and electrify something that we don't want it to be electrified. We can also use the circuits to supply power to our LED and moving lights, but they need more than that to work. Since they have a computer built into them, they need constant power that runs the computer, but also data from the light board to tell them when to turn on, what color to be, and more. DMX cable is the standard cable we use to run data to these lights. From the light board is a network of data that runs throughout the theater that an LED needs to be added to. DMX data is sent from the light board to a light, which can then continue to pass the data to lights further down the chain that are plugged into it. What we need to be careful though is making sure that we have individual control of each light, and we do that by assigning each a DMX address, much like an IP address on the computer. Since each light in the chain is getting all of the data at the same time, it needs to know what part of the data stream to listen to. In addition to being able to pass data from one light to another, our LEDs can pass power from one to another. Since they're all LED and have only a small computer, they only use a fraction of the amperage available in a circuit. The cable they use for power is called PowerCon and can either go directly into a circuit with whatever plug-in you need, or go from one light to the next. They're color-coded to show you what the cable is intended for. Blue ends bring power into a fixture, and gray is to pass power out to the next. And now for a quick demonstration. Now for one last thing, some basics of using the ION. So just for a few short basics, we're going to go over what a channel number is as opposed to a circuit number, how to turn on lights, how to change the color of an LED, record a cue, and how to bring back a cue. 
Remember how we had evenly spaced circuits at our lighting positions that all had numbers on them? Those are called circuit numbers, and are handy for turning on lights at the start, but when we're programming something, sometimes remembering all of those circuit numbers that may or may not be sequential for the lighting system that we want to turn on is annoying. So we can use the light board to relabel them with a new number that we can make up. It's completely arbitrary. I number all of my lights inside of a system sequentially starting downstage left, moving stage right, and then upstage. And then I jump to a fresh number set when the system changes from front light to top light. For example, the downstage left front light is channel 1, and the top light above it is channel 31. For the next area stage right, the front light is channel 2, and its top light is channel 32. That way I can easily remember all of my front lights are channels 1 through 20, and the top lights are channels 31 through 50, and so on. This makes it much faster to remember what light or lights I want when looking at parts of the stage, and working quickly is handy as the lighting designer because I'm usually programming late at night so I can shut off all the other lights without bothering people, and I want to go home so I can get some sleep. Now when we want to turn on a light, on the keypad here we type its channel number, the at key, and then a percentage between 0 and 100, and there's also a button for full, which means 100, and lastly we hit enter. There are plenty of shortcuts too that you'll pick up as you use this more, like typing 10 full full will turn on channel 10 at 100%, but we did it in four button pushes instead of seven. Typing 10 out will turn it off in three button pushes instead of five. We can also use the silver wheel to the right as a fader by selecting the light by typing its channel number and then hitting enter and rolling this wheel up or down until we see how bright we want it to be. Next, and more easily to think about, we can tell an LED what color to be super easily. By typing its channel number and hitting enter, we are selecting the light to be edited. Once selected, we take the mouse and click the tab that says color, and then we see this diagram of color called a chromaticity diagram. What this shows is the three primary colors of light in the corners and how they mix into white at the center. What we can do on the ion is click anywhere on here and the light will become the color that we clicked. Super easy. Once we have lights on and the color we want them to be, to record a cue we type record, and then a number, and then enter. This will save it as that cue number. To go to the next cue sequentially numbered, we hit the go button. To jump to a non-sequential cue number, we would type go to cue, and then that cue number, and then enter instead of go. <sighs> Now that's been a lot of information, so let's do a brief recap, and then we out. Ah, the theater. The APs are typically used for hanging lights for front light. Front light is light that shines onto the actor's face from the audience's perspective so that we can see their face. The electrics are ideal for top lighting. As the name suggests, top light is light that's directly above the actors. The box booms and the ends of our electrics are ideal positions for side lighting. As the name implies, side light is light that lights the actors' sides from the audience's perspective. Going back to the electrics, we will find an ideal place for backlighting, which to once again go along with our naming conventions that lack creativity, is light that shines on the performer's backs from the audience's perspective. Alright y'all, enough of this, I got paperwork to do. That's a future me problem.
And so we close on another day in the life of Lumos Technicus. What a majestic creature they truly are. Tune in next time as we explore the wonders of the Met. Oh yes, I'm ready, sorry! <laughs> Do that again. <laughs>